after three minutes, I'm literally... My face is quivering. I can hardly talk. My hands are shaking like this. My legs are also shaking. Coach Greg, in today's video, cold water therapy. And I have to admit, of anyone I've ever met, I'm the biggest wuss when it comes to cold water therapy. But it does not mean I'm not all for it. And so I'm watching a video of these little kids and they're being submerged in a big bucket into ice cold water and they're way tougher than me. They're in there, they're having a good time, they're freezing, but they're liking it. And many people experience a host of benefits, both physically and mentally, by experiencing cold water therapy. And so I'm the type of guy that I have to dry off in the shower. After I turn the shower off, I have to dry off. I literally turn the heat up so that I'm warmer, so that when I dry off, I'm not cold. I can't even get out and dry off into the open air. I'm that much of a wuss when it comes to cold. And so the thought of cold water therapy, well, that is a daunting task. But I'm down in Mexico and have the spa and have the cold water therapy, the hot and the cold back and forth. I'm thinking, I got to try this. I'm going to be a real man. I'm going to do this. And so I jump into the cold water and I'm in it for five seconds and I run out. Chicken out. Couldn't handle it. And I'm like, come on, Greg, you can do better than this. And so I go in for a second time, this time for 35 seconds. And I'm like, really? It's not that cold. It's not ice cold. I should be able to handle this. And so on the third attempt, that's right. I tried three times. I was able to get in, forget this three minutes. And after three minutes, I'm literally, my face is quivering. I can hardly talk. My hands are shaking like this. My legs are also shaking. I walk out of the water and I'm still shivering. I go into the warm water. I'm shivering. I can hardly talk and I'm shaking. I'm thinking if I did this for two more minutes, I might not be alive. I'm thinking, I don't know what I would do. I don't know how people can do this. And so it's not that I didn't try, but last I checked, I'm not seeing people shivering to this extent. And I'm actually thinking, if there were no doctors present and I just went in there for 10 or 15 minutes, as many people do, what would happen to me? And so perhaps it's because I have a lower body fat percentage. Maybe I don't have as much brown fat as other people. If you don't know what brown fat is, brown fat is more metabolically active. It produces more heat. Some people have more of it than others. And through training, by doing cold water therapy multiple times a week, you can get better at it. You can produce more heat and it gets easier. It's like anything. You train harder than last time. And so perhaps I could start with three minutes and maybe the next time and go three and a half minutes, then four. And eventually after several months, perhaps I could do 10 minutes. And so many people are wondering, is this safe? Should you be putting your children into cold water therapy, experiencing that dopamine high? Should they be experiencing this kind of pain? My response is yes. Why not? Build up some mental fortitude. Make them stronger than last time. And consider this. Children can handle the cold way better than adults. They can boost their metabolism. They have more brown fat activated. It's simply in their DNA to be able to withstand cold temperatures when they're young in comparison to when they're older. When I was a kid, I could go to the beach. I could go in cold water, play all day. But now that I'm older, I'm going to the beach in Mexico, and even the water in Mexico is cold. But is this safe for kids? Kids know when they're cold. Let them. You think they don't know? They'll have the sensation. They will experience it. They have way more brown fat than you have, and they're going to be fine. And so I want to go over some of the pros, the cons, what is good about cold water therapy and what is bad. And so the first thing you need to know is that cold water therapy, it's great for recovery. It reduces inflammation. When you go in cold water, it reduces the inflammation. The muscles are not as swollen. It helps you to recover. But the problem is that is not actually good for building muscle. One of the reasons your muscles actually grow is because of the inflammation from working out. And so if you go into cold water therapy following a weightlifting workout, you're actually reducing the stimulus for that muscle to grow bigger. And so if you do want to practice cold water therapy, do not do it around the time of doing exercise. Separate it by at least four hours, perhaps sometimes later in the day or perhaps in the morning. And so depending on your goals, if your goal is to get a jack physique, huge biceps and so on, you don't want to use cold water therapy around your workout. But if you don't care about getting bigger muscles and you just want to be an athlete, perhaps you're an MMA fighter, boxer, you don't need massive muscles, then cold water therapy after working out, a very good idea. And so I'm watching the Institute of Human Anatomy did a very good video, the science of cold plunging, how it changes the body. And so watch this video. I highly recommend you go and watch it if you're interested in cold water therapy. Because there are claims 
that it could help with recovery from sports and exercise. And aside from the physical benefits, you know, reduced inflammation, recovery, and so on, there are a variety of mental benefits as well. Cold water therapy can help manage stress, anxiety, depression, and for many people, this is huge, far greater and more important than the physical benefits. Just think of it. You're stressed at work, you're depressed, you're having anxiety. If you could alleviate that, reduce that, reduce the negative thoughts in your mind, imagine how important that is to you. Despite the fact that I have a very difficult time doing this, I would love to do this. I wish I could do this. And I think many of you can relate. I have no trouble going to the gym and training for an hour and a half, three times a week and doing an hour bike ride each and every day. But for many people, they're thinking, how can you do that, Coach Greg? How can you exercise so much? How do you have the mental fortitude to exercise each and every day, to eat healthy, to do 150 minutes of cardio a week? Well, for me, it's easy because I like it. And so they might be thinking, well, going in cold water therapy is easy. I love it. I go in for five minutes, three times a week. It makes me feel good. I have an increase in dopamine and I feel better for the rest of the day. I want that experience, but I am having a very difficult time doing it. I want to do it. I want to take part in it. And perhaps you feel the same way. You want to eat healthy. You want to go on a diet. You want to lift weights and exercise, but you're struggling. And so perhaps the secret is to start easy. And so what I did in Mexico, three minutes, and listen, I have to admit this, the water temperature, it was about 53 degrees Fahrenheit or about 12 Celsius. Perhaps I should have started at 60 degrees. Whatever temperature you can start at, whatever time you can handle, start there and slowly over time, progressive overload to the same extent, whatever time you can commit to doing cardio, start there and over time, do it longer go faster. You might start at only five minutes. Maybe next week it's six. Even though I'm preaching 150 minutes of cardio a week, maybe you can't do 150. Maybe you can only do 50. Start somewhere and over time, get better. Cold is one of the most potent natural stressors to the human body, which means exposure to cold water, will definitely stimulate a strong physiological response in that moment. And so when you go in cold water, what's happening is your sympathetic nervous system, it's sending a bunch of signals to the body to change what it's doing. It's constricting the blood vessels. Why would we want to lose all this heat? Let's heat the core, the arms and so on. You don't need blood. We want the heart to survive. We want the brain to stay warm. It's speeding up your heart rate. It's making you breathe more. It's making you on high alert. Get out of there. This is danger. Not unlike if you were to step into a fire, get out of the fire. You don't want to burn to death. And so because you're experiencing this extreme cold temperature, the body, it's on fight or flight. It's saying you need to do something to survive. It raises more adrenaline, dopamine. The body's getting excited. And following this, when you get out, the body has a sense of calmness. It's like, wow, we survived this. We did something. It's a great feeling. The same feeling I would imagine is after I finish an hour of cardio body is being pushed. It's going hard. Heart rate's up. You're exercising. You're doing something good. And so following that, I have a very good feeling. I feel good about myself. I just accomplished this. It's de-stressing my body. And so the same mental benefits I get from doing cardio, I do believe many people are experiencing from doing cold water therapy. However, cold water therapy should not replace exercise. If you had one choice, you can either do exercise or go into a cold water therapy lesson I do believe it's better to exercise. Now, if you go and watch this video, one thing you're going to think is that if you do cold water therapy, suddenly you're going to burn off a ton of calories. You're going to get lean and you're going to be shredded all from doing this cold water therapy. I want to make it clear that yes, it does in fact help you burn more calories. And yes, it does in fact boost your metabolism, but not by nearly as much as for example, lifting weights or doing cardio. And so if you had the same amount of time in your day to do cold water therapy or go and do cardio, you're going to get more benefit from doing cardio than you do from cold water therapy. And so yes, it does work, but not as much as cardio. And so if you're replacing cardio with cold water therapy, chances are you're going to increase body fat and not be as healthy as you once were. But of course, there are exceptions. There's going to be perhaps 1% of the population that's going to get more benefits from doing this than doing cardio. People recovering from substance abuse. This is a way that some people have been able to get over that. You're addicted to the dopamine, the rush, the feeling good of doing these things. This this is something that's natural that you can do that can perhaps make you feel better. Perhaps the day after partying, you're feeling depressed and down. This is a way to boost your dopamine, to make you feel better and get you to snap out of it. Next set of benefits with cold plunging, improvements in managing stress, anxiety, and depression. Is it the cold plunging all by itself 
that's contributing to these reported improvements in mental health. So one important point that he brings up is, is it actually the cold water therapy that's making you feel better, that's putting you in a better mood? Or is it the thing surrounded with doing that? For example, if you and your partner go to a spa and you go and do cold water therapy together and you're bonding and you're talking and you're discussing your problems and you're doing the cold water therapy and you're talking to your partner, yeah, I'm depressed about this and you're bonding. Or perhaps you're going with a large group of people, you're going Going out into the woods, the forest, you're breaking the ice and you're jumping into water. You're with a group of people and being with a group of people, actually being present with others rather than just texting and doing all this stuff on social media, swiping left and right and being with real people in the real world, that can make a significant difference or an impact on your health in a positive fashion. The answer is, I don't know. Perhaps it's a combination of both. I do believe it is. You may feel like even after a handful of cold plunge sessions, you might be able to control your breathing a little bit more easily. You may not feel quite as shocked or ramped up as you did during previous sessions. And so another advantage of cold water therapy is you're training your sympathetic nervous system get used to this. Just think of it. If you've gone in cold water therapy perhaps a hundred times, your body is used to having a stress and reacting to it and you're able to control yourself. You're reducing the impact that that stress is having on your body. And so perhaps there's some cross adaptation. If you do this a number of times and something is hurting you in the real world, somebody is swearing at you, cursing at you, you're under stress, your boss is mad at you, you don't have money, you can't pay the bills, you're having a fight with your significant other. Perhaps you can remember those times when you're in cold water therapy. You can learn to relax. You can take some deep breaths. You can calm yourself and that allows you to get used to the stresses that are occurring in the real world. And so if that is the case, then by all means, why not go for it? Why not practice this? How could that not make your life at least a little bit better? Is that not what we all want? To have a better life? To be able to hand the negative things that are thrown at us? I find it very easy to handle the good things. Hey, you just won the lottery. Hey, you just got a promotion. Hey, this person just said they really like you. That's good. I have no trouble accepting that. These are amazing things. But what about when they say, hey, you just lost money. You just went bankrupt. You just lost your girlfriend. She dumped you. You just lost your job. You're getting demoted. Those are very hard things to deal with. And so if you practice dealing with stresses and you get used to it and you're better able to manage these things, imagine how much better your life is going to be. Now, the other piece of the protocol is time. How much time do you need to spend in the cold water? And what they found was 11 minutes. And before you freak out, it's 11 minutes per week. As soon as I saw this, I was like, oh my goodness, there's no way I could do it. But remember, if it's very difficult and you can't handle that length of time, you're simply in too cold of a water. You start a little bit higher. He says, you know, it shouldn't be in the 60s, but I started at 52. To me, 52, that was plenty cold enough. To do that for 11 minutes a week, to me, that seems very challenging. If I said do 150 minutes of cardio and I said you have to jog the whole time, you're thinking, well, I have a hard time jogging for even one minute. How am I gonna do this? Well, walk, walk slowly. So if you keep the temperature high enough so that it's not very difficult, you'll be able to do it. And over the course of weeks, months, and or years, you slowly make that temperature go lower and slowly make the time go longer. So you could break that up into two to four sessions for a few minutes at a time and still get these cold plunge benefits. If I went in for five minutes, I'd be panicked. I might need a doctor present. And so perhaps that was the longest I should have gone. But it says two to four minutes. I did three. It was 52 degrees. I think I did amazing. And so rather than thinking I didn't accomplish much, uh, everyone else could have gone in for five or 10 minutes. I was shivering and shaking. Well, so what? Don't compare yourself to other people. Just because the other people you're submerging with can handle it longer, they're tougher, they're able to do it better, doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you. Do the best that you can do. You certainly wouldn't want to get hypothermic or something like frostbite. Now, this is much less likely if you're doing cold plunges at your house where you have easy access to warm yourself up. And one thing I want you to be aware of if you're trying this for the first time as I was, when you get out of the water and you go into the warm water, your skin, it's all tingling. It felt like I was on beta alanine. It felt like I had paresthesia. This is your body warming up. Your blood vessels that are going to the extremities, they're now opening up. You're in the warm water. But at the same time, the blood that's going through, it's warm, it's from the core, it's going out to the extremities and it's now getting cold because your skin, very cold. Think of it, you're in cold water for three minutes. If you touch your skin, it's very cold. It's now starting to warm up. And so you're feeling these things. And so please take your time. And I would suggest for the first time, at least try this at home. If you go into the woods a mile away and you dig a hole in the ice and you have to walk back a mile, perhaps you're getting frostbite. 
what? You have to make sure that you're properly dressed. And so please be careful, especially if you're doing it alone. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. You learned something. Remember my number one selling supplement that will improve your endurance, your cardiovascular efforts, GO2 Max. The main ingredient, I really hope you research it. It's called NMN. If you could research and know all the studies. And if you understood this the way I did, I'm certain you would want to take it. It is mind blowing how much this can do for your body, for your health, for your endurance, to help you to burn fat. Think of it. It's giving you more energy. You're better able to go for walks, to move around, to explore the world. And so if you take GO2 Max, expect to experience greater endurance, greater recovery, be able to burn more calories. And if you burn more calories, as you know, calories in, calories out. And so it allows you to be in a deficit. Being in a deficit, a calorie deficit that is, it's going to help you to lose weight. And so although this is not a fat burner, I'm telling you, if you use this, it can help you to burn fat. Interested in GO2 Max or any of the supplements or the training books? the cookbooks, the circle diet book, the clothing line, visit my website, use code Greg for 10% off. And don't forget, if you have no money at all, got free diet and training program, you can get that on the website for free. And so head over there right now, click the link in description, subscribe, click the bell button, comment to boost the algorithm. Also watch one of those two bloops. And until next time, I am out.